Hello everyone, my name is Kieran. I'm one of two logical engineers from Team XMOS, and today I'll be presenting on a few of my technical contributions from this past semester. So once our team determined we'd be developing a smart audio baby monitor uh, using the XMOS Explorer board, uh, as well as a uh, daughter board that we fabricated, we began by developing a series of prototypes uh, for the speaker system. And so this included a Raspberry Pi microcontroller, uh, a digital to analog converter or a DAC breakout board. In our case, we used the MAX 9857A, um, which allowed for something known as I2S communication or inter IC sound uh, as opposed to uh, I2C or inter IC communication. Um, and so then this breakout board was just then connected to a speaker, which would allow us to simply take an audio file convert it from its digital format to an analog format, and then play it through the speaker. And so this is the same hardware setup that we would then use to evaluate a series of commercial speakers. And so we did this by uploading an audio file with a series of narrowband and broadband frequencies, and playing it through the speaker to determine uh, distortion and loudness of the speaker, uh, to then use that speaker for the uh, smart audio baby monitor. Um, from there, we then began working on the audio codec schematic. And so the codec, uh, or the encoder or decoder, uh, is what compresses and decompresses uh, the audio data between and sends the data between the boards. And so the audio codec that we selected for our purposes was the WM8960, which is an affordable, low-cost codec. And we were then able to design the audio codec schematic in... Altium Circuit Designer, which once the PCB is finally done, we'll be able to send that uh, to begin prototyping and developing a real uh, hardware model in the spring. Uh, next, I'll be passing the mic to our my fellow electrical engineering designer, uh, Jake Mueller. Hello, everyone. For those of you who may or may not know me, my name is Jake, as previously mentioned by my partner, Kieran, and today I'm here to walk you through some of the things I have accomplished over the course of the semester. To start off, we began the semester by discussing artificial neural networks and machine learning. Neural networks are a subset of machine learning and aim to mimic the biological neural networks of the human brain. In light of the prototype smart baby monitor we plan to develop next semester, we could use neural networks to help us recognizing clusters of data, specifically any noise that may be recorded with the baby monitor, for example, screaming, crying, and sleeping, and categorize this. This feature to our design would be able to help us classify a distress signal and to notify the parent unit so that the baby's guardian is alerted. Moving forward, we generated broadband and narrowband signals to test commercial speakers using Audacity software. To generate the signals, we applied a low pass and a high pass filter to filter out all the unwanted frequencies, which for us consists of any frequencies not in the range of 100 Hz to 7 kHz. The narrowband signals were represented using a variety of different tones within the previously mentioned frequency range, and the broadband signals were represented using a chirp and a white noise signal, which also fell in this frequency range. With these self-generated signals, we tested three different commercial speakers and compared the signal's distortion and loudness to determine which speaker was the best quality. After determining which speaker was of the best quality, we began development for the audio codec and power supply schematics. We decided to design our codec and power supply from scratch and ultimately ended up selecting the WM8960 for our codec and the BD70522GUL dash E2 buck converter for our power supply. At this point, I would like to pass the microphone over to Tevin Flores, who is one of the two computer engineers that are part of the project, so that he can discuss with you some of the things the software side has accomplished during the semester. My technical contributions for the year were installing and configuring TakiPi software. That project was done in such a way so we could have an idea of what full duplex audio would look like. I also ended up finishing Google's machine learning crash course. I learned FreeRTOS API, since most of the examples that we were given by Exmos were using it. 
I also ended up building and testing some example from Exmos. And while doing this, I ended up noticing a couple issues with the with the audio receive code. Then I proceeded to create a custom project with only the relevant software for the project, such as being able to connect to the Wi-Fi and so on. This block diagram. This block diagram is based on one of the examples that we were given by Exmos. Here we're showing how we send audio from one board to another. In this scenario, we have two different boards, device one, device two. Device one sends the audio through the microphone, then goes from the microphone to TCP, and then finally we go from TCP to the speaker. However, the audio receive code is not properly working at the moment, and this function is actually based on two different other functions which are basically receiving the audio from the TCP port to the queue and then getting the audio from the queue to the speaker. And recently, we were actually able to get the audio from the TCP to the queue. And now we have left to work on is basically just getting the queue audio to the speaker itself. And once this is resolved, since device 2 also has a microphone, it shouldn't be too difficult to actually apply full duplex audio through the two boards. As part of our initial research in on the software side, I built an as part of our initial research into the baby monitor project. Our technical directors, Andrew and Steven, suggest that we should look at the uh, Talkie Pi. And the Talkie Pi is a Raspberry Pi based walkie talkie, which needs a kind of host system to host a server to allow the walkie talkies to talk to each other. So, what I did is I built a one of these Talkie Pies uh, just by installing the necessary software off of GitHub and putting those things together, and also set up a Mumble server to allow. Um, audio communication between the talkie pi between the talkie pies, and also I had to make sure that everything worked. Just ran it on my laptop, server on the laptop, and just had the Raspberry Pis talk to each other, make sure that voice communication was working. On the software side, I built and tested an example explorer board project, which was included with the Xcore SDK and the Xmos tools. This demonstrates a lot of the features that are available on the board, which is for example, like TLS, which we can, you can use for encryption, uh, audio sh audio receiving from the microphone, um, also audio streaming, which eventually we discovered that that was not working. So the portion of the code that allows the Explore board to receive audio from a different device and also put it to the deck was not working at, by the time we got it. We also discovered that the TLS um, portion of the Explore board code also dependent on internet connectivity, which is something we did not want to have because we wanted the boards to work without any actual network connectivity aside from Wi-Fi to communicate between the boards. Aside from that, um, to fix the issues that we've had with the audio receive code and also the encryption, we created a custom project and that has only the necessary code, the, the Wi-Fi initialization and also the audio uh, send code, which allows us to stream the microphone data over Wi-Fi. And with this, this required me to learn a lot of uh, free RTOS API because most of the demos use free RTOS to manage all of the all the the tasks on the board. The final purpose for The final purpose for the Explorer board and Smart Baby Monitor project is to actually have some kind of machine learning component added onto the baby monitor. And for that, I needed to learn the machine learning API that we we're going to use. So for this, I did the um, Google's machine learning crash course that teaches you the basics of machine learning, whether or, not, whether or not it's actually necessary to use machine learning for the task you're using. And also, it taught me a lot of Python programming with, through the TensorFlow TensorFlow API, which is for the machine learning, and NumPy and Pandas, which is used for the actual data inputs that you'll need for TensorFlow.